with Madam President. I want to clarify this to everyone here. And during that meeting, we requested from the President of the IPU to help us by engaging with the executive, because we felt that, you know, talking to the parliament is great, the engagement is good, but we need the support of the executive from both sides. We need them to listen to us. We want to listen to them. And this is we, as a task force actually, requested from Madam President to start engaging with both executive government in Ukraine and in Russia. And that was what she initiated, and she wanted to start with Ukraine. And that was part of the schedule which the Secretary General and the team actually worked on. But unfortunately, because of other commitment that President Zelensky had, he had to go to Washington to attend the NATO meeting. That, was meeting, that meeting was canceled two days before the meeting should be held. And then we were already scheduling a meeting for BRICS where she was invited as an IPU president and she attended and she did that meeting. What I want everyone to know that, you know, we as a task force requested the support and the engagement of the president of the IPU with the executive to help us in our mission for uh, getting to peace between Ukraine and Russia. Thank you. Dear colleagues, please bear with us. We still have we, we still have a long agenda and we have only one hour remaining for the governing council. So Okay, now, um, that said, I am sorry, I have uh, recognized those who, have, who had indicated to, uh, to need time to speak, but in the interest of time, we will not be able to give all of you the floor. But because, but because uh, Ukraine had spoken and in the interest of fairness, uh, Russia will be given a chance, then I will address you on all the concerns that have been raised about the report. Russia? Hold on. Thank yes, you. you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Madam President. What we see uh, here now uh, does not make me happy, and this is not about Russia being attacked, it's about the IPU being attacked and the President of the Interparliamentary Union being attacked by a certain geopolitical group. All people who criticized you represented 12 plus. This is a consolidated position of 12 plus, which is well known. But 12 plus tries to force the president of the IPU be the voice of 12 plus. And the 12 plus group tries to force the interparliamentary union be the, the voice of uh, 12 plus, which I believe is absolutely unacceptable. We are more here than just one geopolitical group. Uh, talking about the uh, forum in St. Petersburg, uh, the president of the Interparliamentary Union, just for your knowledge, was invited to participate in the 10th Parliamentary Forum of BRICS countries and parliaments. And uh, 18 parliaments were represented at that meeting. And thank you very much, Madam President, that you accepted this invitation because this is your duty. The meeting was held in the Russian Federation because Russia right now presides is the chair country of BRICS. And this is the common decision of BRICS countries to be respected. And uh, of course, Russia hosted the uh, forum and uh, the president of Russia addressed the forum and it was absolutely natural for the, some participants, not just the president of the Interparliamentary Union, the president of Russia had more than one meeting with uh, the speakers of parliaments which were represented at this meeting and this is absolutely natural and absolutely in, in, within the framework of the duties and uh, uh, the power of the president of interparliamentary union. So please, Madam President, stay strong. You are absolutely right. In, uh, and I would like to thank the uh, task force on uh, Russia-Ukraine conflict for uh, doing their work and trying to assist to find 
acceptable solutions for both sides in the conflict, which is the only possible approach to be taken by the Interparliamentary Union. Thank you so much, Madam President, stay strong. Thank you very much. Um, colleagues, a concern was raised by Iraq in respect of the report that I've just given you, and Iraq was questioning why did I visit Russia in the context of the war in Ukraine and not Gaza. I would like to inform my colleague that you might note that in November last year, I visited Palestine and I visited Israel and I met the leaders. And that was my first visit after becoming president in October. So it's not like I have ignored what is happening in the Middle East, what is happening in Lebanon, what is happening in Gaza, and what happened in Israel. So I treat, I treat all the conflicts the same way. And you might also want to note, the conflicts that we are talking about in the Middle East the war that we are talking about in Ukraine, they are not the only conflicts that IPU is looking at. We are concerned about what is happening in Yemen. We are concerned about what is happening in Syria. We are concerned about what is happening in Sudan. We are concerned about what is happening in West Africa. We are concerned about what is happening in DRC. Lithuania asked specific questions. Who mandated you to visit Russia? Why not Ukraine first? The letters were sent out, dear colleagues. The letters were sent very explicitly. They explained, and if you need copies of those letters because they are not secrets, you can always have copies. Letters were sent to our counterparts in Ukraine. Letters were sent to our counterparts in Russia. My visit was to begin with Ukraine. Ukraine Ukraine responded the dates that were, we were ready to visit them. Mr. Zelensky and Mr. Speaker would be in New York for the NATO meeting. Would I have stopped them? No. It would not be wise. In any case, don't, don't, I don't have such powers. Now, because the meeting of BRICS was taking place, would I stop going to Russia because Ukraine is not ready to receive me because of time? No. Why? Because IPU stands for dialogue. IPU is talking about parliamentary diplomacy. And it is in that context that I did all that I did. And I thought I would be given a little credit for all the efforts that I've done, not to be crucified for things that I have not. You're asking here who mandated me? Who mandated the former president who came from the 12 plus to visit Kiev? Who, who mandated him? Please, I think we have to reach a point where I have explained myself several times to you, 12 plus, to everybody else who cared to understand. If you have a feeling like I went to Russia without going to Ukraine first, I have told you several times, letters were sent out. I wouldn't turn out my visit to Russia because I'm unable to reach Ukraine. You didn't ask me similar questions when I visited Israel, did you? You didn't ask me similar questions when I visited Palestine, did you? You're not going to ask me similar questions when I visit Sudan. You're not going to ask me similar questions when I visit other places. I think, colleagues, let's have trust. You have elected a president who is supposed to deliver to her mandate. You have elected a president who is supposed to deliver to her mandate, and I think you are dealing with me unjustifiably, which is not fair to anybody. The questions that you have been raising, I have responded them to the best of my knowledge and to the, to the best of my objectivity in all this matter. And you must know, I would not have asked to meet Mr. Putin if it wasn't for Ukraine, my commitment to doing that, and this is not the first place I'm visiting. Why is it that it's looking like I have met this person and therefore the president of IPU has over, all of a sudden become a monster? Please treat me with dignity the same way I am treating with you, you with dignity. times 
advance parliamentary diplomacy. I will at all times give respect to the ideals of IPU, but I request you members to also accept I'm not God, I'm not an angel, I'm only human, I'm doing what is possible within my powers. The president of the task force has just informed you, and I have been talking, repeating myself in this respect. I was requested by the task force to do what I did. What did I do wrong? I was supposed to sit back and tie my hands and say there's nothing we can do as IPU. That will not be doing justice to the women and children of Ukraine who are suffering. That wouldn't be fair to the mandate that you have given me. Give me a chance to lead this institution according to the ideals that we stand for. Not to crucify me just because I come from some country. Some of you maybe feel like we are still colonized in the mind. No. No, we are not. No, we are not. So please, let's respect each other. I'm doing the best that I can, and that is exactly what I'll do. That is my commitment to you. I will keep doing that. Thank you very much. Some issues have been raised here very specifically wanting me to say somebody said they want the full record. I did not record the meeting. So I don't have that record. Secondly, the resolutions where they shared, they have been shared several times, and I also mentioned them. Kidnapped children uh, that are in, in Russia, that is an important issue to IPU. We have been working together with the task force, and we will keep working together to make sure children are returned to Ukraine. You have talked about written requests. I have responded to every request that comes to me. The good thing is when they come to me, they go to the Secretary General as well. There is no secret about this thing. If anybody wants more information, we have a whole file of all the communications. On the other hand, I, I have been asked here, uh, why, Denmark asked me why I visited Russia while I haven't visited uh, Ukraine. I have already expressed what actually happened. I believe, dear colleagues, this explanation puts at rest this matter so that you let me lead the institution you entrusted me to. That said, colleagues, that said, like I said, we are very much behind time. And 